Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide and servant on the healing journey. What's my name? Big Papa, baby, baby. Brian Post here with you. Hope everyone's doing fantastic today. You've enjoyed your holiday. And uh, I want to pop on here for a little bit and chop it up with you. So, I had a question. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this this evening. Hello, Kirsten and Stefan from the Netherlands. This is from our one of our posties. She says, let me see. Let me go up here. What is your solution for regulating sleep? My daughter has such a hard time going to sleep. It is often 2 to 4 a.m. before she can sleep. Sometimes worse. And then there was a follow-up comment. Let me see what it was. The sleeping ha- issue has been a struggle for me. I can't stay awake, and sometimes I get mean when I'm half asleep, and I get annoyed that she doesn't just roll over and sleep. But that doesn't help, and I need my sleep. So if we don't go to sleep till 2 in order to get 8 hours of sleep, that means sleep till 10, and the whole day and cycle is off unless I just surrender to that kind of lifestyle and stop fighting it. Ooh. Oh, yes. Sleep issues. All right. So here's the thing. Sleep is a very sleep challenges is a very common issue with, with children who have trauma histories. And the reason goes way, 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 way back. Usually starts in utero. So as I tell you these things, I want you to be piecing them together in your potential future conversation with your child. So a lot of children in utero experience a birth mom who is unsettled. A lot of adopted children, future adopted children, experience a birth mother who is unsettled. You know, there's all different kind of circumstances. They, they're, you know, sometimes there's drug and alcohol exposure. Sometimes there's domestic violence. Sometimes the, the parent is, is on drugs, you know, days on end. Um, and what that does is it disrupts a part of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is a little structure of nerve bundles that sit next to the pituitary gland, and essentially they control your circadian rhythm. So they control your ability to um, relax and go to sleep, just like sometimes your ability to actually wake up and get going. The same is connected, uh, your circadian rhythms are also connected to your food, your your sense of hunger, your sense of fullness, things like that. So a lot of times when you're dealing with sleep issues, you're dealing with children who have some very core disruption of their circadian rhythms. And the thing you have to do is you have to start to repair that. Now, one of the things I like to encourage parents when you know the story is talk to your child about the story. Like tell them, tell your child the story of her early experience um, as an infant, maybe potentially in the womb. If you know the story and you don't always have to know all the details to the story to have some generalizations, you can lay in bed with your child and you just talk about the fact that maybe when they were in their in their biological mommy's tummy, it, it wasn't as calm, it wasn't as soothing. And then there are other circumstances when children have been sexually abused, they've been physically abused, they've witnessed violent things around nighttime. So there's that that whole dynamic as well that plays out. So that is can be very, so trauma can disrupt the circadian rhythm. So when a child, for instance, has been sexually abused for long periods of time um, as a small child or at nighttime, then that makes, when they get older, it makes it really hard for them to sleep. So the reason I'm telling you this is because you always wanna focus on 
the understanding, like the behavior, the, the fact that the child cannot sleep, does not fall asleep, you know, right away, doesn't just roll over and fall asleep. Um, that's one dynamic, but that's not the dynamic you want to be focused on. The dynamic you want to focus on and have an understanding for is the early experience. And like I said, you may not always know. Sometimes you ask your child, do you remember what it was like to fall asleep when you were little? If you, you know, say you adopted a teenager, um, you know, have bad things ever happened to you at night? Have a conversation because what you want to do is you want to create some kind of soothing around that anxiety that is very deeply rooted. So that's like the first thing. Second thing is you want you want to also you know, start to have control, more control over the nighttime. I mean, I had a, a dad just the other night call me. It was pretty late. Um, was having an issue with the son. And and uh, he actually said right away, he's like, you know, I kind of, I this is really my fault. His, his son was in his bedroom throwing a fit, and I could hear him in the background. It's, it's interesting to hear a 13-year-old who sounds like a 2-year-old who's crying. And uh, dad said, this is kind of my fault. I let our other son play a video game, and then he wanted to play him because he's younger. I said, no, so you need to go ahead and go to bed. He got really upset, and so it just started, it tilted the wheel from there. And um, I said, that's that's perfect, because then what I instructed dad to do is actually go in his son's room and apologize and say to him, just because I let your brother play the game and not you, it doesn't mean that I love you less because there's a whole rejection and abandonment dynamic um, that plays out in that. But the part, the part I want, the, the reason I mention all of that is because you want to control the environment around nighttime. So when it gets close to nighttime, sometimes you want to start having a conversation, especially if you know there's anxieties, if you know there's fears, if you know there's been, you know, disruptions in the nighttime routine. Have a conversation. Hey, honey, it's starting to get dark, and I know when it gets dark, you start to feel a little nervous and a little anxious. Now, why would you have that conversation? Because you want to take what's unconscious and you want to make it conscious because that gives your child more, more control over their anxiety. See, a lot of times we don't even know why we're anxious. A lot of times children don't know why they can't sleep. It's their body. It's their unconscious. It's their conditioning. And the way you start interrupting that conditioning and that unconscious is by speaking, speaking it to them making it more conscious. So control the nighttime, turn the televisions off, turn the lights off, start reading a story, put on classical music, take a bubble bath, you know, play, have a little play, have a little fun, you know, relaxation, eat some dessert, you know, do, do some things that start to give you control of the nighttime and the anxiety connected to it. But see, the thing is, all severe behavior is always predictable. It's always predictable. We just have to learn to get attuned enough to pay attention and start to pay attention to the things that cause the escalation and then do something different. It doesn't have to be uh, you know, a big issue and make a commitment. If your, your child's having issues with sleep, make a commitment, not in an obsessive way, not in a stressful way, but just in a way that says, you know what, we're going to work on this. We're going to work on this until we get into this understanding enough that you're able to sleep good. Now, what I will also say, because a lot of parents get obsessed with the fact that their children need to have eight hours of sleep. Two things about that. Number one, if you're laying down with your child when it's time to go to bed, the best thing for you to do is go to sleep. Actually lay down as though you're going to sleep because that relaxation is what brings their bodies down. If you're, if you're anxious for them to go to sleep and you're still awake, then they're typically, it's just going to keep them awake. So just go ahead and relax. Hello there, Mimi. Go ahead and relax into the sleep. Number two, the number two part of that. All children don't need eight hours of sleep. I function probably on about five to six hours of sleep myself. I can function on less, and sometimes I get more, but on average, I probably average about six hours of sleep at night. So your child may have some different sleep needs than what you need. Um, the other thing, final kind of recommendation that I'm going to offer you is supplemental and um, melatonin is very effective. Melatonin and magnesium can be very effective for helping to begin regulating children's sleep cycles. And the best thing to do with, with both melatonin and, and uh, magnesium is to take it right around dinner, sometime after dinner, at least two hours before bedtime. And, uh, you know, start with a small dosage of, me of melatonin, like 2.5 milligrams, 5 milligrams, depending on the size of your child, and then about 250 milligrams for your child, 
you know, again, depending on size, and then just kind of titrate up or down from there. But magnesium is a smooth muscle relaxer, so it can have actually helps the muscles relax. It's also very good for the digestive system. And melatonin is also very good for being a sleep aid. So those are a couple of natural things that I would really encourage you to uh, to play with as you are trying to work your child into um, getting better sleep. So that's it, guys. Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from the same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, we can take three to 10 deep breaths and choose love. And I hope you will choose love. God bless you, Big Papa loves you. Gonna be on the road tomorrow, so I should be able to catch you guys live from Santa Rosa, baby. Have a good evening. We'll talk to you guys later. Join us live on weekdays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.